looks dark. Is it because our screen is dimmed? Oh, there dimmed we go. That's a little better. You can change the light too. Hello, everyone. Hi. We are hopping on this Sunday evening to do a live stream because we've been getting a lot of questions um, through our Instagram and even here on YouTube about the RV life while being a travel therapist. Mm -hmm. And really the, the big question is, is it worth it? You know, is it worth getting an RV? Is it worth paying that upfront cost? Do we enjoy traveling in the RV that we have? And, um, and then some finer details of just kind of RV living. And so we hope to go over some of that today with you. Yes. Um, there are a lot of pros and cons. And so we're hoping to cover those as well as like specific things to consider if you're even thinking about trying out an RV because it's different for each person, each situation, and there's many different types of RVs. So there's a lot yeah. to think about. There's definitely a lot to think about. And so let's kind of just hop in and start with the pros. And so obviously we are a little bit biased because um, some of our background, we bought a very old and um, not good looking RV. It was a 1994, about two or so years ago when we were still in school, still in physical therapy school. Yep. And then we decided to renovate that RV. And we actually lived in that RV for full time for solid for about a year, taking travel contracts. And then our past couple contracts, uh, we haven't been able to find parking for it. So we've been using some Airbnbs and some different housing options, but we still have the RV mm -hmm. and still plan to travel in it. So we are a little bit biased towards RVs. Yeah. And I actually appreciate that we had the opportunity to travel not in the RV because it kind of gave us a picture of like, what do we prefer and what do we think is better, at least for us. So some of the pros that we can get into with having your own RV as a travel um, therapist is one that your house never changes. So there's a lot of change with travel and that's something that you kind of have to get used to and be okay with as a travel therapist. But change can be really hard on people in general. And so you kind of have to be resilient when it comes to change. But what's nice is that with your own RV, that never changes. So it lets you feel like you have a home base. Um, I think that was our number one pro, I yeah. would say. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the first thing we always go to when people ask us about RV living. And really it's that we get to take our home, something that we've made our home, our things are in its place. Yeah, We're used to it. We're comfortable there. And we get to move it to whichever travel contract we're going. So no matter how much change happens on around us, changing of the job, changing of our scenery, um, we have at least one stable piece in our life, other than ourselves, obviously, um, that we can come back to at the end of a hard work day and, and feel relaxed and rejuvenated. Yeah. And that's kind of intertwined in having your own house with you at each place you go. So it makes it a lot easier to stay organized as you travel. That's something we noticed when we had to do Airbnbs instead of the RV is we felt so unorganized all the time because our stuff was hastily packed up and then brought into a new place and then you shove it into places to find space for it. And nothing has a real home. And so we never felt organized, which did not help just with the flow of life. So it's nice to have a home, have a home for everything that you have, staying organized. Another thing that's nice about having an RV is um, <clears throat> that you don't have to pack up all your stuff, load it into either a car or a U-Haul or whatever, and then unpack it when you get to a new place. And you get to take more with you. So if you're some of those people out there that are a little oh, yeah. bit nervous about being like a quote unquote minimalist, and just taking like a backpack to a travel contract, an RV could be a great option because we would have stuff like I would have tools I'd like to keep with me for the RV. Um, and I would have like a bay under our motorhome that I could keep that all in. It was all organized. We had kitchen stuff that was all organized in cabinets. And then when we were ready to leave for a different travel contract, we just made sure everything was in its place and we started up the engine and we said, here we go. And yeah, so that was nice to where if you're going to travel like Airbnb to furnish finders, you got to travel with a lot less in your vehicle. Um, and we would even suggest 
pack what you think is a lot less and then cut it in half. And that will take a little bit of the stress out of it, uh, moving all your stuff. Yeah. So if that's for you and you want to travel with as little as possible, go for it. But RVing actually did let us keep more, which is kind of ironic because a lot kind of people of are like, wow, Not how do you pare down so much to live in an RV? And after doing both, we had so much more stuff in the RV for sure. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. A lot less stuff than living in a house, but uh, plenty of stuff to get by, let me tell yeah. you. Um, the other nice part about an RV is that the typical month to month cost of living in an RV is cheaper. So, yeah, and that can vary greatly. Uh, but depending on where you're at, depending where you're at, which state, um, and depending on what you're renting we kind of compare it to what we would need to rent. So like we like to have our own unit. We don't necessarily like to share a room in a house with other people. Um, we like to have a kitchen or a kitchenette of some sort. And so finding those short, short term leases are usually a little bit more per month to rent those spaces compared to an RV park where we've had about 500 to um, $800 per month. And then the apartments have all been up over a thousand. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, that does differ. Um, you can rent a room from someone if you're just a solo traveler, and that can be like $500. Um, so that isn't too bad at all. And then you just share some common spaces. Um, or you might get lucky on Airbnb or Furnished Finder, like we said, and get something a little cheaper. But overall, we have found that the, the monthly to monthly cost is, is cheaper. Mm -hmm. Usually electricity is included. Some some RV parks include <laughs> electricity, some some meter use. So you do have to take that into account. We've had yeah, both. That's true. But if it's included, you can use those heaters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing that we wanted to note about the pro for an RV is on travel days when you're going to a new place, um, it can be a pro to have your own sleeping area with you and it can make traveling a lot cheaper. Um, so if you're able to dry camp at like a Cracker Barrel or a truck stop, Walmart parking lots, even just some roadside RV parks really aren't too bad. 30 yeah. bucks a night. Yeah. It can make that whole process super cheap, which can be a major plus when you're receiving a travel stipend from your company to get to the new location. You can save a lot of that money um, by not paying like $200 for a hotel, for every a hotel night. every night. And that was really beneficial for us. Cause we've had, uh, our hometowns in Missouri and we've traveled out West to Montana, out West to Which Washington, like long treks back and forth. Yeah. And so we've had, it was a multiple day trip, um, in the RV and that would have cost a lot for hotels. Um, so that's really nice. And if you're the type of travel therapist who's interested in taking time off in between contracts to do your own exploring in the area, a camper is really great because then you can go to those national parks. You can stay in RV parks, even around places you want to see, even cities you want to see. Just you might have to be on the outskirts and stay in RV parks for a lot cheaper than it would be to travel and stay in hotels every night for, you know, however many weeks you want off between contracts. Mm -hmm. I actually have gotten to the point where I prefer staying, like traveling with an RV than in hotels because it's nice to have your own bed. After it's you nice get to have to your sleep own toilet. For free, I mean, you can't beat free over $200 a night. Especially if you're like us, sometimes we travel, uh, what I call travel hard, where we are trying to get to a place because we want to start our contract and, um, Really, we just need a place to sleep. We just need a place to crash and we'll drive all day. And then it's starting to get dark and we're just like, well, we just need to end. You but can stop when you we need We don't to. need a lot of the amenities, um, but we can just stop where we need to. And then the perk of having the RV is we cook our meals there. So we'll stop for lunch, cook a meal. Healthier, yep. yeah. We'll stop for, for dinner, um, breakfast in the morning. We have all of our stove and, and fridge all fridge. there. And so um, even the food costs uh, are a little less on that. The gas, though, the gas in Big Betty, our yeah. motorhome, not the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, so um, those are most of our pros that we thought of, the main ones for having an RV when you mm -hmm. travel. Some of the cons, um, I think one of the first ones is just that you have to consider you might have to do repairs on the RV. Um, you have to do repairs on, like, 
house and on a car. So, you know, it could kind of transfer to other things that you have to maintain, but it's another piece of equipment for you to yep. maintain and consider. Whatever you own, it can break and you might have to fix it. And so you do have to take that into consideration. And a lot of times if you go into it knowing like, okay, at some point my RV is going to have an issue um, that might have to get fixed. It. Yeah. Then that makes that whole moment um, a little easier to handle because you're like, well, we were expecting this and, you know, yeah. it isn't so shocking and ruins your life like breaking down <laughs> on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah. Um, it can also be a little bit more nerve wracking to do travel days. So even though we mentioned all those benefits to travel days, there's also feels like more that can go wrong. Would you agree? Um, there's just more to consider. So it's a lot different than um, when you have your car all packed and you're just hopping into your car, you drive every day and you're just going. Um, there's a lot less that can happen compared to having your tow vehicle and towing a big RV and um, or driving a big motorhome like us. And so just uh, a little bit more stress maybe on the day of until you're used to doing that mm -hmm. more often. Mm -hmm. um, usually for us, it's kind of stressful at the beginning because we don't move the RV too often once we're at a contract. Um, but once we once we get on the highway and we get going and we have our systems down, then, then you start to relax. Yeah. And that's the other big main thing that we thought was a con with the RV is that there's a large learning curve. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not a permanent con because you get used to all of those things, but there's a lot of learning that comes with having an RV just. Yeah. Learning how to, to pull an RV, to back in an RV, um, how to dump your tanks or your black tanks, your, your gray tanks, um, just understanding the systems of an RV. But what's great is we have this awesome thing called YouTube <laughs> and there's videos on everything. And that's how we learned. And that even though the learning curve is a little steep, it's just like anything you start new, you just stay with it. And if you really want to be an RVer, then you'll figure it out. It'll, it'll all go fine. Yeah. So if you consider the pros to RVing and then the things we're going to list about the things to consider about RVing <clears throat> just, and you really want to do it, just give yourself some grace for yes. some of these things that any RV or goes through. Doesn't matter how long they've been doing it or why they're doing it. Everybody goes through it. And if you know that you're going to have to learn new things, be outside of your comfort zone, things are going to go wrong. If you know that and expect it and give yourself grace for figuring it out, time to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't be on a huge time crunch when you're trying to set sail on your first assignment. Voyage. Yeah. Um, it can make the whole thing a little more bearable. Mm -hmm. We highly recommend if you get an RV, take a little trip somewhere where you have yeah. to drive some miles and just kind of get your systems down and let the bad stuff happen on that first trip. <laughs> that doesn't that give you get you have yourself time to adjust. Um, that can it. be that can be kind of helpful. Yeah. Okay, so um, things to consider about an RV if you are a travel therapist that uh, we like to bring up with people um, because the, sometimes you just don't think about it. You're excited about, oh, this would be cool to live in an RV at kind of a tiny home and, and travel therapy is exciting and new. And so we just want to put these out there. And so one of them is more, more of an obvious one, but just the upfront cost of getting an RV um, can be very daunting. And so I know it really was for us, because if you think about buying a, a new truck, if you think about buying uh, a new RV, you know, that is a lot more upfront. So you have to put that into your analysis of, you know, yes, it's cheaper to live month by month, but you are going to have to pay that upfront cost. And there's lots of different ways to do it. I know for us, we bought um, what what we could afford at that time as students. And that was a really rundown RV that we knew we were going to have to do repairs and remodeling on. And um, it was fun and we love it. Yeah. And, and it's worked <laughs> out really well. We have friends that um, they got some loans and they bought a, but uh, bought an RV in a truck um, used, obviously nothing brand new. And, um, and they've been paying, you know, off those loans through travel therapy. So that was just like kind of another cost for them, but they felt like it was worth it. Mm -hmm. And um, they've been flourishing and they've loved it. And so you do have to kind of consider that. And um, I think 
if we had to do it again, one of the nice things about having kind of a truck and trailer combo is that you get to leave your trailer and you can use your truck as a commuter vehicle because you will need commuter vehicles to go to your place of work. Yes. So that's the other thing to consider is what are you going to commute in? And we've had a couple people ask us if we thought you could live full time in a van, like if you're a solo traveler and use it as your commuter and totally depends on the type of person you are. But after living in a recreation vehicle um, and working, we would not choose that just because it's your full time living space. You. It, there's definitely challenges to it. There's people out there who do it and um, travel nurses, travel therapists, and they're making it work. Uh -huh. But if that's your only vehicle, you will have to drive your home to work each day and then back to um, probably a campground because if you want, uh, this goes into the tax law, but if you want those tax benefits of tax-free money through your stipends, you got to have dual expenses, meaning you got to be paying rent wherever your travel assignment is and rent back home. Yeah. Um, so just with an RV, picking it up and moving it every morning to work <clears throat> means that you're going to have to unhook electric, unhook water. You're going to have to make sure everything in the RV is secured so that it's not falling around, drive it and then come back. And at the end of your day, rehook it up to everything. So we don't necessarily suggest making your commuter vehicle the same one that you're living full time in. So then you have to consider, do you want to tow something um, or do you want to pull your RV with your commuter vehicle? Yeah. So. And so like, like we said, we bought a motor home. And so that meant we needed two additional uh, commuter vehicles because sometimes we don't work at the same place. We got to commute to two different areas or we're both working home health. And so we drive our motor home and either pull one of our little cars with the motor home or with our other little Subaru. And so that's three engines to maintain, something to think about, more repairs, more tires, you know, all that to where if you have a tra truck and trailer combo, that can be sometimes a little more expensive, but uh, you also probably need another vehicle. Um, if you're a solo traveler, my biggest suggestion, if I was a solo traveler, what I would do is I'd look at an RV, the smallest RV that you feel comfortable living in full time, and then look at the SUV market that can pull those trailers, because usually those are a lot cheaper than trucks, and then they make a great commuter vehicle for you. Yeah, that was the other thing we thought you should consider when it comes to picking an RV is the size. Um, so a lot of times Ryan says, pick the smallest that you feel like you can live in, which is hard to imagine when you're not living in it at the time. Um, but the smaller it is, the easier it is to manage. It's also mm -hmm. easier to find spots to park it because the super big fifth wheels, which you got to get pretty big to have trouble finding a spot. But um, just <clears> easier <throat> to tow behind a vehicle. You don't have to have as big of a tow, tow vehicle or, or truck to yeah. pull it. Um, so there's some benefits uh, to having a smaller RV. Yeah. And then the other one you should consider is the age. So we bought one that's older than us. And then when we got on the West Coast, we had some places say, you can't park your RV here because it's older than 10 years. Um, we've had some parks that have that rule, but we talk to them. We usually call them, tell them that we're health professionals, that we're working in the area for a certain amount of months, that we've rehabbed the RV inside so that they know that we take care of our things. Um, sometimes we've sent them pictures of the inside and the outside. And we've had, when we do that, they allow us to park our RV. But sometimes you do run into this thing called the 10 year rule where mm -hmm. they won't let you park if your rig is older than 10 years. Yeah, so. mostly mostly we've seen it on the West Coast and in RV kind of resorts, so nicer places. Uh, but like we said, talk to them and they might let you slip by. <laughs> yes. And that's, that's kind of our main things. Yeah, that's kind of our main things. I think the big question we probably need to answer is, is getting an RV worth it if you're a travel therapist? And we would say... I don't know. What did we say? What did we say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we would say yes. 
And um, obviously it's because <laughs> we probably are a little bit biased towards it. And the way we did it uh, was rather cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, but that component of having your home with you in each place and just making travelers so much easier because you bring your kitchen with you, you bring your bedroom with you, and it just gives you a little piece of home no matter which state we're in, which travel assignment we're on, has been a really big benefit for us, I feel like. Yeah. We also think it really depends on how you want to travel. Mm -hmm. So hopefully going through some of these pros and cons and the things that you should consider about an RV is helpful for you to kind of think through how do you want to travel um, because it's different. Kind of the goal and the aim is different for each person. So it really worked well for us. We had two people. We wanted to see a lot. We wanted to try and do things um, most cost effectively, but there might be another person who really wants to get down into cities or wants to travel super minimal and fast and mm -hmm. all around the country. So maybe it's better for you to find that short-term housing in an Airbnb, have as little as possible and just go as fast as you can. And an RV would just be cumbersome. So while we love it and we definitely suggest it to people who are considering it, depends on what your goals are. Yes. I think that's, Maybe. I think that's huge. Yeah. I think that's huge because I think it fits our lifestyle and how we like to travel perfect. Um, but if, you know, if you're a tra solo traveler and you don't worry about the RV life, you just want to rent a room and, and get going then, um, and be most probably cost effective and make the most money during this, then renting rooms for $500 and meet new people who are probably also renting a room um, could be a great way to go. Yeah. So we do have a few questions um, on our chat here. So we'll go through those a little bit. Yeah. So Stephen McFarland, my dad, hi. <laughs> he asks, what's one thing that was totally opposite of how you thought it would be with the RV? I think loving it so much for me. I was afraid I was going <clears> to <throat> hate it and not be able to stand being in a small space and living in an RV just sounds kind of like sketchy a little bit, <laughs> but um, it really became home for us. And I think back on living in Big Betty and really miss it. Yeah. I was surprised that Megan liked it so much also. <laughs> well, um, we, we really do. We really do love living in the RV and we, we have it parked actually by our house. And so we'll go over there and you know, get in it and get stuff out of it. And sometimes we just sit in there and we're just like, oh, I can't wait this until we so take our next trip and get to live in Big Betty because uh, we've had some great experiences in there. Yeah. All right. Other question by True North Compass. Um, I've been considering going full time in New York and parking on public streets like cemetery or other public streets. What is our advice? Um. So if you're a travel therapist, where you run into the issue of parking your RV, um, not even even in public streets or anything, but anywhere where you can kind of have free parking to try to save money, the issue you run into is the tax law. So as travel therapists, we earn a housing stipend that can be tax free, but you have to show dual expenses. And what that means is you're paying rent wherever your travel assignment is, and you're paying rent wherever your home state or your tax home is. So you have to be paying rent in both those places to get the tax-free money. So if there's no paper trail, like I'm staying in national parks or uh, nat uh, national forest land for free, I'm not paying anyone rent. And so I can't earn that tax-free money. And so now my housing stipend has to be fully taxed. Mm -hmm. Now there's people who travel like that, itinerant workers um, that, that travel and they just take everything and say, yep, tax it all. Um, it's just not as uh, beneficial as making sure you have both of those dual expenses. And we talk more about that on our video, our tax home video. So be sure to check that out to kind of find out the little details. The other thing, this person is going full time, so they won't have to worry about that. So the other thing to think about with um, just being in any free public space is that utilities are going to be harder to manage. So if you feel like you can manage that, um, then go for it. But you just won't have accessible fresh water that you can use. It'll be more cumbersome to dump 
um, your gray and your black tank. And then electricity, I guess you would have to have a pretty sturdy power bank or you would have to be running a generator, which would draw attention to you. So if you don't want that extra attention drawn to you. Yeah, um, so some of those things to definitely consider. Those would be some things to think. Also, usually in national forest there's like a 14 day rule where you're allowed to stay for 14 days but then you have to get out for 14 mm -hmm. before you come back in and use it so it would just be a little more complicated because you'd have to move It'd around be a lot of moving especially if you're working at a hospital or one place you'd be moving a lot around um and there isn't always a guarantee that that is there yeah but if you want to tackle it try it if it doesn't work for you yep, then find an rv park yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right. I well, that's good. unless anybody has any other quick questions, thank you for joining us today. We hope that this was helpful and um, that you consider choosing an RV. Yeah. If you found this beneficial, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. That supports us so we can keep making these videos for you guys. And hopefully some people find some benefit from them. All right. All right. And uh, until next time, <laughs> see ya. Yeah.